Hey everyone, I'm Steve Nash. And I'm Michaela De Cesar, and here's our review of Arcana. In Arcana, players are trying to build up the biggest guild and control most of the areas. Inside the box, you'll get four guild cards, a game over card, a first player card, green cards, which are objectives, red cards, which are militia, and blue cards, which contain everything and everyone in the city of Cadwallon. Each player chooses a guild, and each guild has their own little ability of winning ties on certain type of cards. To set up the game, each player gets the cards associated with their guild. Nine agents who are used to recruit more agents, one location card called the Headquarters, and one Relic card which can be used to bribe personalities into joining your guild. Everyone's deck is exactly the same at the start of the game and has the same cards. These 11 cards are shuffled and are placed on the right side of their guild card. Next, shuffle the blue cards and make 5 decks of 12 cards each. Place those decks so that each player has two in front of them and one of them in the middle of the playing area. These are called zones. In the middle zone, shuffle the game over cards with the bottom five cards. Give each player four objective cards and they must choose two and discard the other two. These objective cards remain hidden from the other players. Shuffle the six militia cards and place the deck to the side of the playing area. Flip over the top card of each zone. The game is now ready to be played. Let me explain the different stats on each card. The staff is military power, the sword is political power, should have been the opposite but whatever, the gold chalice is spiritual power and the coin is financial power. One of these numbers will be in gold, this means it's the main power of this card. The first player gets the first card, each player draws four cards from their main deck. Players take turns playing one card at a time. Basically you are trying to win the face up cards that are showing on each zone. Each of those cards has a gold number and you are trying to play cards with that power in that zone. So for example, if you are trying to win a personality with a spiritual card number of 5, you can play one of your agents with a high spiritual power next to that deck. If the deck is one of the two closest to you, you can play that card face down. If it's the middle deck or the two away from you, you must play your card face up. You place the card you are playing according to where you are sitting so your cards will always be played on the side of the deck closest to you, so that players know which cards belong to who. Once all players have played all four cards, the face down cards are revealed, and for each zone, the player with the highest total value of the card's gold number wins that card. All cards, including the one which won, will be placed on the left side of your guild card. This is how you increase your guild's power. All zones that are empty flip over a new card. The first player card is given to the player to his right and a new round begins by drawing four new cards. Some of these cards will be locations. These locations have special effects and once played are resolved and placed in your resource deck. The other cards you might see are relics. These are items you want to buy so that you can bribe personalities into joining your guild. So for example, if there's a personality in one of the zones and you have enough treasure to reach his coin value, you play that card on one of your agents and you immediately resolve that zone. Take the personality, flip over a new card and return all other cards to the owner's resources. If you have a relic in your hand but it's not enough to win over a personality, you can use it to draw the top militia card and play him on any of the zones. At the end of the round he is shuffled back into the militia deck. The militia deck has two captains and four soldiers. You might get lucky and draw the captain. The game ends when the game over card is flipped. At this point, you all get one extra round. At the end of that round, players add up the points on each of the cards in their guild, including the objectives card if completed. The player with the most points wins. It's a great fast-paced card game with good player interaction and nice artwork. The concept is innovative and the box is small enough to bring to school or work. There is a lot of bluffing involved as well. It's one of our favorite card games and we're giving it an 8.5 on 10.